Hi, my name's Keith Cooper, North Light Images, and um, I'm going to have a chat today about printing and choice of printers' papers. Uh, this is a specific comparison because the other day uh, I printed this large black and white image and uh, I printed it on a Canon TC20M. Now, the TC20M is not sold by Canon in any way as a photo printer. It's sold as a plotter, it's got a scanner on it, but it's 24 inch and it takes raw media. And this particular print I did on a photo paper. This is a Luster photo paper from Dupley here in, um, in Leicester. And it's come out rather well for a four color printer. Now I've got a video and I put a link obviously in the notes, but it's just one I did the other day that uh, you know, looks at the making of this, the taking of the picture, where I was, why I took the picture, all kinds of stuff like that. But this is more on the technical side of it because somebody said, um, they noticed that I said in the video that I wouldn't sell. I wouldn't choose this printer if I was selling prints. What did I mean by that? And what did it look like on other printers and were the differences that obvious? Well, this particular printer uses four inks. That means there's CMYK. So black, cyan, magenta, yellow. There are just the four color inks, they're pigment inks, so they're gonna print okay. Now, this particular print has come out quite well. In checking it over since I did it, I have noticed a very slight banding on this, but that banding is because with this particular paper, I didn't run the alignment check, I, I fixed the alignment, on the printer. So there's a printer come up which will set things up and that actually gets rid of. It's very faint, um, there's a slight banding across it and it's to do with the paper feed. And once it was set up properly, uh, it prints fine. So there's no issue there. What deficiencies are there in this print? Well, relatively few, and they are the deficiencies that not many people are going to notice. There is a very slight bronzing. Now, bronzing is when I look at uh, reflected light, and I've got some lights at the top here, as well as a sort of bigger light over here. Uh, when I look at the reflections on the print, um, I can see a slight metallic sheen on some gray levels. Well, most people won't notice that, and if you put the, if you light the print carefully, you won't see it. But the problem is that once you do see it, you can't unsee it. Now, this is nowhere near as bad as some other printers I've tested in the past. Years ago, I tested an HP printer um, and it was an excellent printer, one of my first large format printer reviews. But if you didn't use the gloss optimizer coat on it, it had tremendous bronzing. And that really was quite noticeable, much more so than this. This is on the, yeah, I can see it because I know what I'm looking for sort of level. But if I look at detail in this, in these light grays, I'll just put the picture up so you can see it um, slightly better, hopefully there. Uh, it's, it's this one here. As I say, there's a, um, there's a video going on about the making of it and the taking of the photo. It's taken as a 100 megapixel image taken with a GFX 100S with a Canon TSE 24 lens on an adapter for it. So it's 100 megapixel medium format. So there's no shortage of detail. Now, if I get a very strong magnifying glass, and for that, uh, is, I use, for, for testing, looking at prints, I use this old CCTV lens, a C-mount lens, screw fit lens, uh, 25. If I use this without any glasses, I can get very good magnification out of it. And I, it's just one I use as a, as a loop. Um, of course, I could use, take photographs of it. I do macro photography. I've got high magnification lenses. I could do that. But um, with this lens, I can see the colored dots that make up the gray here. Now, even if I put two pairs of glasses on and look very closely, I can barely see the ink dots. I can get a slight impression of them. My close-up eyesight is just not that great. Um, I need glasses for anything close up. Anything beyond six feet or so, something like that, I don't need glasses for. Uh, but for close-up stuff, two pairs of glasses though, or that, and I can see the colored dots. Now, does that really matter? No, not a bit really, because um, the only people who are going to notice the coloured dots that go up to it are people who carry round a lens like this in their, um, in their pocket. And it's typically going to be other 
photographers, or maybe the odd ultra-particular photo judge in a competition. There is no accounting for the activities of judges in competitions. I steer well clear of this, um, and very rarely do I actually sort of, you know, will I respond to requests to be a judge in a competition. Um, my choices are too variable. I am just as likely to pick a technically deficient picture and go, that's because I really like it. Um, so don't expect any consistency. Give me a strong cup of coffee and my opinions will change. It's, it's like that. It's, um, you, you need to be of a certain nature to be a good judge in photography competitions. And I am not of that sort of style of looking at things. I just genuinely don't care. Is it a great picture? Is it a poor picture? Yeah, lots of other things. Now, technically, if you ask me, and if you ever ask me to evaluate a picture or something, you will need to ask me at least twice. The second time I will say, are you absolutely sure? And if you say yes twice, I will give a critique of a picture. Now, I don't do this online or anything like that, but I will. It is just something I want to be sure that I'm happy to discuss technical deficiencies in pictures as long as you are really sure you want the answers. Um, so it's, that's how that goes. But anyway, looking at this, what would I use this picture for? Commercial print. Now this one is is slightly damaged now because I've rolled it up and moved it around here. Um, it's got a few slight crinks in it from the paper. Now, take a bit more care with it. And this would make a nice print that you could put up on a wall um, in, in an office or something like that. You could frame it. Likewise with the colour prints. I did a, I've got another video using the TC20M that looks at that. But you know, this is a sort of picture you could put up on the wall and most people will look at it and think, oh, that's an interesting picture or that's a gloomy picture or more likely, where did you take that? That's what most people see. They see a beach, they see bits, they want to know where it was taken. And that's what most people see. People do not see the fine detail in this. And it prints very well. Now I printed this at high quality on here on this printer and it works well. So anyway, I said I can do a comparison. And for this, I've fired up the old uh, P5000 here. Now it happens to be set for matte media at the moment. P5000 is one of the older printers that you need to switch between either matte black or photo black. I happen to have some rolls of Hannah Muller uh, paper. And this particular one that I've done a print on is printed on hemp paper. Now, this is a warmer paper and I've printed this once again from Photoshop. All I've done is use the Photoshop print dialog. I've set a custom paper size because obviously this one had a custom paper size for 24 inch roll. The P5000 only takes 17 inch roll. So I've set a new custom print size uh, that will take the image. So this is, I haven't printed it from this computer here because the color management on this is set up for looking good on videos rather than necessarily doing any editing work. But anyway, I used the standard Photoshop dialogue um, and I've printed it and we have this. Now, I've set the length of the paper slightly longer than the image because I can trim that when I'm going to be doing some mounting. And it was just a size, you know, a size I've set for it. And I've used the adjustments here. Now, how have I prepared the image for printing on 17 inch paper as opposed to 24 inch paper? All I've done is gone into the Photoshop image size option. I've made sure that resample image isn't selected and I've set the image size to 16 inches high. This one here, I've set the image when I printed it to 23 inches high. And then the width is whatever the width is because I'm printing on roll paper. I've created a custom paper size to do the printing for both of these printers. So this one, this is using pigment inks. Now, because of the gray inks, that are in the uh, P5000. It has more inks and they're pigment inks. This is a printer, although it's generally sold for proofing, this is a very nice printer to use. Take sheet paper as well, very good one for that. But I've got reviews of, of this printer in detail and some videos as well. But I've printed once again, but this time, whereas the option in the driver for the Canon merely said monochrome printing, and it's very good. You know, for a four color printer, 
that is pretty decent looking black and white. There is a slight tinge to it. Now, when I've printed this one, I've used, this is um, Hannah Muller's, uh, it's one of their sort of eco range of papers. And this one is, as I say, it's a smooth finish. It's a natural white, so it is not quite as white as the bright paper and bright photo paper here. And I'm using, I've done some testing on these papers. I did them for some testing a few months ago. And I know that if I use the Epson ABW print mode, as opposed to the, the Canon one here on this printer. Now Canon on things like the Pro 1000, Pro 300, have a black and white print mode where you can do adjustments like this, but not for this one here. Remember this, is, this printer is sold as one for, as a plotter, as one for posters and things like that. It's not sold as a photo printer. So there, you, know, you wouldn't expect them to compare necessarily. But I've used, settings here. I've used the ABW. Now I know from when I first tested this paper, tested its linearity and various other things, and I've, I've got a review um, that looks at it, and I'll put some notes in, in, the, you know, in the video that link to various things that I've tested. But I know that this paper, to get a neutral outlook on it, I need a color adjustment in the black and white settings. Uh, a minus five on the horizontal axis for that. And that just subtly changes the tint of the inks to give a more neutral look on this paper. And it does do that. Now, if I get the magnifying glass out here, or the, or the, yeah, the old lens, and look at this, I can, and I've printed this, not at its absolute finest font, it's printed at 1440. Um, I've printed this and I've looked at the dots in this and I can just about see them. There are much smaller inkjet drops on this than there are on this. That makes the ink drops less visible. It, yeah, it does indeed bring out detail a little bit more, but you're not going to notice that. Most people are not going to notice it. However, because they're grey inks, there are no obvious coloured dots in this. Now, there will be a few dots of coloured ink in the mix here, just to give the neutral look. This, there were no adjustments. This is black and white. If you try black and white printing on the TC20M and it prints okay, that's great. You might need a slight linearity adjustment, but if it prints great, it prints great. If it doesn't print great, there's nothing to adjust. Whereas here on the ABW mode for this, and the same would, be go, would go for if I'd printed this on a Canon Pro 300 or Pro 1000. Um, once again, I'd expect much superior results than I'd get from this. When I say much superior, most people won't notice that difference. Uh, in fact, most people would notice that the picture here, the print on the art paper, is generally a lower contrast than this. And that's because you expect on luster papers, you expect slightly blacker blacks. Now, I quite like a softer image for seascapes like this, or, you know, on the shorelines like this. Um, I don't always like the harshness you can get from a photo paper. I could try, um, I haven't got it on roll, but I could try a fine art paper, and I have tested on sheets in the TC20M, and it would produce a result that would look more like this. Now, I can't try these uh, rolls here of Hannah Muller paper, by the way. These have three inch cores on them and three inch cores are not supported by this printer. The rolls are too big to fit in it. So there are some limitations on this and the two inch core and the, um, and the spindle and how the cores are held in place is a slight issue for this in does, does limit your range of papers. You can use. There are plenty of papers, but it does limit papers. So um, these, I've, I've actually got four different types of these Hannah Muller ones, they're natural line. Um, they're all nice papers, um, but I just happen to have the hemp one loaded because it's nice, it's a smooth finish. There's a slight surface roughness to it. This is a print that I would happily frame and sell and expect to last for years. The quality of it is excellent. It's printed with pigment inks. So when I said I wouldn't sell these, I mean, I wouldn't 
frame this up and sell it as a fine art type print. Now, of course, nobody knows what fine art actually means, but you know, as a landscape print, I personally would be happier with this one here. This one, if somebody just wanted a print to go on the wall in an office or something like that, a print like this will look great, as do the colour prints, and I've done some of those as well. But when you look at the ink dots on this, the smaller ink dots, they're also, they're not coloured. So you have to look very carefully. If I was to print this image on this printer on a luster paper or a brighter paper, once again, I, the adjustments would allow me to get a more neutral black and white. If I printed on this printer using uh, a brighter paper, for example, such as one of these ones at the back here, I could adjust that and I would get a very similar look to this, but on a thicker paper. Uh, but of course, limited to 17 inch. If you want 24 inch prints, so I can do a 24 inch by 37 inch print here, no trouble at all. I'm limited with this to the size you can get. So it depends what you want to do with the prints, but it's the same image printed this one. I'm using Epson ABW mode and it produces the results I expect it to. Why else would I, you know, I print stuff using this? Because I know what it does. It's, it's excellent. Um, if this gets replaced sometime, I would expect its replacement to be more like the P7500 I tested in terms of the range of inks and whatever. Um, would I expect it better? Not necessarily that much. Remember, printers have pretty much plateaued printer technologies. Would I expect it better than that? S maybe usable. Ah, uh, yes, I wouldn't have to swap blacks, which would meant I could have loaded a roll of brighter paper uh, easily there. Now, it doesn't use much ink, but it's just an inconvenience. Um, and, you know, Epson have finally, they don't have the black ink swap on more on newer and current printers. But so there we have two versions of the coast. Uh, this is Dry Ridge Bay. Um, and the, the other video which goes into the actual making of the print and the adjustments and the editing and things like that has got the background between behind me taking this and various things. But this particular print I like. Um, it's gone into, well, we're a bit short of space around here, but this is one I'd happily have up on the wall and um, works very well. So to answer that original question, why wouldn't I sell the prints made on the TC20M? Well, I would, but it depends what market I'm selling into. And there comes the whole art. If you're going to sell prints, are you selling a premium product? Are you selling a decorative product? You could say both are decorative. But you need to know, if you're going to be selling prints, what sort of market you're selling prints into. Now, these sort of prints, I have produced ones like this before on other printers. I used to have a Canon IPF 8300 here and would print off ones like this. Now, that had lots more inks and things, so the, the quality of the pictures was closer to this, the P5000. But ones like this, I would just have them laminated onto Fomex, have a lamination across the front. Of course, that helps actually get rid of the bronzing a bit. And they would be cut out solid and they'd be mounted on the wall. And people, hopefully, they'd be put up in offices and foyers and things like that. And hopefully people, when they're coming in, oh, that's a nice picture. Um, if somebody walks past it in an office and just goes, oh, that's a nice picture, it's done its job. Um, and that's its job. Now, I'm going to have a, um, in, in looking at these, and also some questions I was asked, I'm also going to be having a look at what should matter to you. Now, I, I talk about selling prints, and I don't sell a lot of prints. It's not a big part of our business, but I do sell prints. But I'm going to be having a look at what does it actually mean and is the idea of selling stuff, who your customer is, of relevance to you as maybe an amateur photographer in discerning your own needs? So um, anyway, two pictures, two prints of Drurridge Bay and Northumberland. Um, I rather like that one. Um, that one's for me dad. And uh, huh. Yeah, quite pleased with those. Anyway, I hope that's been of some interest. I will be having... Um, a, a, got a lot on my plate at the moment in terms of other things to do but I will be getting a written review of this TC20M in due course 
and um, I'll include details, all of this sort of stuff, some of the measurements and that, and I'll see if I can take some close-up pictures so you can actually see the colour dots as well. But it's very easy to print on these, and if you want a cheap large printer and you're not absolutely critical about quality, well, that's that's certainly the cheapest way I've come across, and it's sitting on a desk. It's not uh, it's not on a stand or anything like that. Um, it'll fit in your office. Well, maybe if you've got enough space. But uh, anyway, thanks for watching. As I said, any questions, please ask. Please do subscribe to the channel. Please do also pass the channel details on to anyone you think might find it of interest or of use. Uh, that's appreciated as well. So, thanks for watching.